You know, one of my favorite things to do in life is to get out and throw knives. In this video, we're gonna be talking about no spin throwing. Stick around. I just wanna say what's up to everybody. I wanna welcome the new visitors here to 411 Outdoors as well. I hope you enjoy this content. If you do, give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and don't forget to click that bell. Let's get rolling. You know, I'm primarily a rotational thrower, half spin, full spin, and I've gotten pretty good at rotational throwing, and I've gotten to the place to where I pretty much instinctively know where I need to be to pull off a half spin or a full spin throw. Once you do it enough, you just begin to start feeling the distance a little bit more. But the problem with rotational throwing is that it is governed by distance, and unless you can develop a deep, innate understanding uh, of that distance and where you need to be, you're at a disadvantage when compared to no spin throwing. In most cases, from what I gather, when people refer to instinctive throwing, they're pretty much talking about no spin because it's not as governed by distance as rotational throwing. I would argue that it is a little bit governed by distance because depending upon where you stand, it changes your grip on the knife. In this video, I want to improve my no spin throwing. I can do it, but I struggle outside of 12 feet. I've been doing some research and trying to figure out what I need to do to increase my distance. I wanna put that into practice today, and if it works, I'll share it with you. All right, so let me share with you what I do know. I'm typically pretty good 10 to 14 feet no spin throwing and I love my Raycon Tanto. This is my favorite knife in the whole wide world to throw. I've got other cold steel knives, the Mini Flight Sport blades, but I like this better. I like the weight of it. I also like to throw the GI Tanto, but the GI Tanto's got an extended handle, and it, it just makes it difficult to get that choke on the handle. You always have to kind of throw from the bottom. This one gives you some more options because it's longer across the back, but I love the weight of the, the Recon Tanto. Now, the way I do no spin throwing is I, I grip it right here with my index finger. Now there's other ways I've seen guys, you know, go across their, their middle finger like this. That's a very common way of throwing. Um, and some will, you know, throw it from the side. I typically just put my index finger right here on the back of the blade like this, and I grip it here. Now, I'll show you how I throw, and you can look at my form and everything that I do from this angle, which is probably the most important. I can show it to you from the side as well, but this is an important angle when doing no spin. For me personally, there's like five mechanics that I have to have working together simultaneously if I can even pull that off. To me, that was much more difficult to learn than, than any of the rotational throws that I do. So I'll share with you the mechanics that I have to have in place in order to make that work. From that distance, my finger position is here. It's choked up on the blade just a little bit. I'm not at you know 10 to 12 feet, I'm not down here. I'm not down on the bottom, I'm up here a little higher. I'm maintaining the blade this way. The blade, I have to bring my arm back. If I don't bring my arm back, it just doesn't seem to work. If I don't bring it back far enough and I end up doing that, I always end up over rotating. So, you know, consciously going back is important. And then when I come forward, at about this point, I'm doing this, I'm pushing the blade out this way and I'm releasing it so that the blade can come, just, just roll out of my hand, just like that, and fly forward like that. So I have to have my hand in the right position. I have to bring my hand back. I have to release it at about this point, almost pushing it straight and letting it roll right off the tip of my finger. There's one other element though, torque. If you don't have a certain amount of torque in that motion, it's just gonna fly very slowly and it's not gonna hit with a lot of power. So I'm gonna try to demonstrate this one more time, showing you all of those mechanics. I wanna add this as well. The mechanics will differ depending upon the knife that you're using. For me, if I'm not using a knife with some substance and some power, it gets difficult for me. I've gotta have some weight and substance for no spin to even work well for me. I've tried to do this with lighter knives and I just have not been successful with it. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back a little bit further, probably in the range of 14 to, to 16 feet, and I'm gonna, 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down the blade closer to the end just a little bit further. And I want to see if this makes a difference. Now, I want to tell you, I have struggled at this distance. The, the distance that you see is the one I'm comfortable at. 10 to 12 feet. This is 14 to 16 feet. This has been a little bit more difficult. Going out further, it's just going to get more and more difficult. So here's what I'm going to try to do. I'm going to, I'm going to come down on the blade to about this point, And I'm going to try to release a little sooner. I'm going to try to push from here. Instead of where I was at, I pushed about halfway. I pushed out, pushed out, released. Here, I'm going to come back. I'm going to push from about this angle. Okay, let's see if it works. Got lucky with that one. It hit right here. It was on its way out of the rotation, but we made a stick, but we didn't make it stick pretty. All right, I'm gonna bring this to a conclusion. The throws that you just saw were at about 16 feet. That's as far as I have ever been able to throw no spin. I did a little bit of practicing before I made this video and I struggled a lot. I started getting to where um, I was doing pretty good towards the end and I thought, you know what, I'll make this video and I'll see if I can you know, share the things that I'm learning. I can tell you right now, if I go out any further, I'm gonna struggle with no spin. It took total concentration to do what I just did. That was a difficult distance. It was like a complete and total game changer between 10, 12 to 16 feet. It was just a huge game changer. But here's what I did. Came back further down on the knife. You know, when I was throwing 10 to 12 feet, I was here. I was here on the blade with my index. I know some throw this way. I haven't had any, any success with that. I threw with my index and I came down further. And what I had to do was come back. Okay, I had to come back like this and I had to release slightly sooner but i had to push and give it torque all at the same time torque is so important and that's the trickiest part of this is having the right amount of torque with those techniques that's what you have to practice so i got further out i came back straight back brought my arm back and i released a little sooner letting my fingers slide right off pushing it through the air this way and i started making uh, some connections. I wanted to do a couple of throws for the video. And uh, as you can see, I was able to uh, have some success. So put these things into practice, see if they help you. Let me hear from you in the comments. If it helps, I'd love to hear. Maybe you have a way that I could improve upon my no spin throwing. I'd love to hear from you as well. I'm still a student. I'm always gonna be a student. I hope you have found this encouraging and helpful. Man, no spin throwing is really cool because it does allow you to be more instinctive i'm not saying that you can't be instinctive with rotational throwing because i feel like i kind of am but i still got more work to do in every area i hope you enjoyed this video catch you in the next one see you